the bestseller Happy Wives Club and founder of HappyWivesClub.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I like it. the critically acclaimed author, historian, just all around great person. She is. Give it up for Fawn Weaver, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Yes. Fawn Weaver, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Fawn. Sway, I have been, I am so excited. I have literally watched you from the very beginning. When you had dreads. Very beginning. <laughs> and I told I told Kenny when we were coming in, I said, what I love is he was always truthful and conscientious before that was, was a thing. Yeah. Before, Facts. before it was a thing. Yes. And so I used to love watching you because you were like no one else mm -hmm. and you made everyone think. Yeah. And no one else was doing that. Wow. Man, hunger, so, man. That's so, a hard <laughs> moment. <laughs> I felt that truth. I felt that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I usually give the intros here, Fawn Weaver. Enjoy what you Thank you. Thank you. No, I honor you. I really appreciate it. Have the bees here. Hello. Nice to see you. Legend. 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 Icon. Legend. You know. Yes. Tracy G right there. That's a legend in the making. Oh, in the making. Future legend. Nice to meet you, Tracy. We are not worthy to be here, so thank you. Thank you for having us. And we're also joined with somebody who, when you think about um, the DIY movement, mm -hmm. if you will, that, that has become popular in this millennium, but even before that, we have folks who are already putting those building blocks together to help us uh, learn how to properly brand and market and promote what it is we do in this culture. Uh, he's been a curator of a ton of great moments that I've had a chance to experience. I, I even that. used to wear his shirts. Oh, uh, you know, I remember being good. in Miami for the VMAs yeah. back in 2005. I had my Kenny Burns shirt, right, button, the Ryan Kenny, the yes, Ryan Trinity, yes, you know, yes, and all that, yes, all, all that, all, all, all that wonderful work he's done. And then he's partnered up with you, Fun, right? Yes. Okay, the one and only Kenny Burns is Kenny thank Burns you, is thank it. You, thank you. Sean John, Chirac, hey, Revolt, yeah, Bad yeah. Boy, Outcast, the list goes on and on and on. Yes, sir. Jay Z, B I G, all yes, these men. God rest uh, Craig Mack. Craig wow. Mack. Yeah, yeah. We Crazy. lost Craig Mack. Mm -hmm. 46. Lost Come Craig Mann. That's why I oh. woke up like, damn, I better count my blessings. Yes, That's what the yes, people yes. our age that are just all. And I wish when, people could get their, their flowers while they were here. Like, he yeah. didn't go on the Bad Boy tour when we did it, and it was. It was a thing that I just wish he could have felt that love because that mm -hmm. tour was really about a moment in time. Yeah, and yeah. what it meant to us growing up, right? And it's yeah. just, you know, God rest the dead, man. I just I wish he could have got that. You I know? wish he would have got that. Even while we're here today, uh, the reason why I wanted you to hear, uh, be here because, uh, you know, Jack Daniels um, is a is a, is a has been a mainstay in my family. <laughs> oh, you know, wow. You know what I mean? Right. And, and so there's a, I'm not a big drinker. Yeah. yeah. You know, Heather, you will chime in anytime you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> Heather B, okay, though. Let me, let, me, let me explain why I appreciate wine and spirits. I'm a certified mixologist. Hey. So awesome. I'm, I, I'm not just behind a bar or I, I don't just have cocktail parties and everything at my house and host people because it's just, hey, pour drinks and everybody just get sloppy drunk. It's about an experience. Um, it's yes. about bringing people together. It's about understanding and having people enjoy a cocktail and start asking questions and start mm -hmm. talking and sharing experience. So that's how I always approached um, you know, the wine and spirit yeah. industry and I got that from my grandfather. Now his bootleg and corn liquor Come Something a little different. <laughs> That's a little different. I ain't gonna tell names <laughs> about Bondswell, South Carolina. Hey, uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> That's, okay. So it, it's just been a part of my family for years, and I embraced it, and I and I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love the industry. And it's so funny. I come from an opposite, where my I come from a family of teetotalers. So nobody was drinking. My mother okay. and father did not drink wow. and i was probably the first person to bring alcohol in our household good for you just Rebel. because it, hey it is you know <laughs> well, we it, had moonshine here and pig feet here. <laughs> damn Same yeah, my family damn. Real. Yeah, moonshine and pig feet <laughs> moonshine and pig, pickle pig feet damn y'all still on that slave <laughs> diet <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So, Fawn Weaver, yes. uh, we we are here to uh, to learn about the story. Yes. Uh, that has yet to be told uh, about the yeah. one and only Nathan Nearest Green. Yes. And I had a chance to read up on the story. I love history. Yeah. I'm a buff. <laughs> I love to find out what happened beforehand. 
Who is Nathan Nearest Green, and why was it important for you to get behind telling this story? Yeah, Nathan Nearest Green. Everyone called him Nearest, or they called him Uncle Nearest. But uh-huh. he's the first African-American master distiller on record in the United States. And if you know the American whiskey industry, you know that we helped found it. Uh-huh. We Absolutely. were doing the work. work. We were in the steels. We were, But there's never been a whiskey to honor an African-American. So I'll tell the story really quickly. No, no, don't tell it quickly. Uh Uh-oh. Don't skip a beat. Lord. Oh, I love it. That's why we're here. Sway said I can tell the story. Oh, I'm a happy camper. It's a great one story. So in around 1820, a, an African is mm-hmm. born in Maryland. Mm-hmm. And we don't know how he goes from Maryland to Tennessee other than that was a, a pretty common route because mm-hmm. they were being sold into into Tennessee, into the South there. And we find him in around 1855, 56 on a farm in a for a white preacher and distiller. Okay. And the white Ma- preacher and distiller near mm-hmm. Screen. We uh-huh. find him on that farm. The preacher was Dan Call. The preacher was Dan, Dan Call. Call. Yeah. Research yes. buff. Yes, yes. I sway. love it. I love it. Let's go. Yes. Let's go. So, so, so he's on the property of Dan Call. Now, Dan Call on record didn't own any slaves, okay. which means he rented nearest. So he he, he like leasing a car. It, yeah. Unfortunately, yes. Okay. Because distillers were very expensive. Mm-hmm. So slaves, you and I, normal folk, would have gone for eight hundred dollars, right? But a distiller is going to be Crazy. very expensive specific, and difficult yeah. to, talent, mm-hmm. yeah, difficult mm-hmm. to. So there's a there's a newspaper article, and you would love this, or a newspaper ad that went all over Tennessee that Andrew Jackson put out, mm-hmm. and it says, "Have you seen my runaway slave? He is my best slave. He's my distiller." And so that was something that was cherished among slave owners. And if you couldn't afford to buy it, then you you rent him. So Nearest was rented. And we see him, we find him on this 313 acre property. Mm -hmm. And he is working the still house. Well, the preacher, Dan Call, had to make a decision. Either he was going to go with continuing to make whiskey or his church was requiring him to leave that in order to continue to be in ministry. And his wife was a teetotaler, didn't want anything to do with alcohol. Mm -hmm. And so that was a decision he had to make. He decided to go with staying a preacher. Okay. And so the still house continued to be run by nearest screen. So I would venture to say at that moment, he became our first master distiller because he was running it. Okay. Dan Call was no longer running that still. So in around what time was this? 1856? 1856. So so I don't know the exact year, but when he married the teetotaler, Uh August 4th, 1856. So so you got this enslaved person. Yes. Now the boss of a still house. Yes. Uh, who were his workers? And they would have been other slaves. Other mm-hmm. slaves. They would have been other slaves. And so you you do have a number of slaves that would have been on the property. Now we have brought an archaeologist to that to that mm-hmm. three hundred thirteen acre property. And so they that she have. Owns I, now. <laughs> Sorry, I just have to say that. You own that, that she that? owns now. Yes, please. Okay. So that, say that. <laughs> say that. I'm trying to hear it. I'm trying to hear it. Yeah. Okay. So, so they have they have identified what they believe to have been three slave quarters, uh-huh. and it was next to what was the still house where nearest would have been making the whiskey. And so you have this whiskey that's kind of going out and and or at that time was staying on that property. And around the same time, a young white boy, uh-huh. eight years old about comes to the property as a chore boy so this white kid not privileged he lost his mother at four months old and he was the 10th child so he had to figure out how to make a living pretty quickly he had to figure out how to raise himself Mm -hmm. pretty quickly and so he is at this farm as a chore boy he's running after you know milking cows running after the hogs he's cleaning up after them he's going to get water out of the well for the family so he was a worker Uh and he took a fondness to the distilling side of it. Uh And he wanted to know more about it. So Dan Call says to this young boy, this is Uncle Nearest. He's the best whiskey maker I know. And he asked for Uncle Nearest to teach this young boy how to make whiskey his way. Uh Now, the only difference between Kentucky bourbon or bourbon that most people know and Tennessee whiskey is a process called sugar. It's sugar maple charcoal filtering, Uh also called the Lincoln County process. Uh 
Well, that's named after the county that nearest lived and made his whiskey. The Lincoln County process. And the only difference between Kentucky bourbon and Tennessee whiskey is the process nearest top. So only difference. His recipe, if you his yeah, his, his process. Method, right. process. His process. Okay. Now his process. where that process came from, it would have predated him uh-huh. by hundreds of years. But you will love this. More likely than not, it came from West Africa. Uh-huh. Because this is something that I've been working with a lot of historians on to figure out where did this come from because it just kind of dropped out of the sky in right. Kentucky in the seventeen hundreds. Uh-huh. But if you look at what we were doing in West Africa with our food and with our water, we were already using charcoal uh-huh. to purify our food and to filter our water okay so i just started reading you know what i'm talking this, about no <laughs> I, I just started reading this book called the cooking gene yes by michael twitty yes yes love michael okay. he is he's one of the people that i'm leaning on for this history yes it, it's all about the history even from the start of the fire and the charcoal and, mm-hmm. and yes. the food and the, so this is amazing yes. how it all we have to go back mm-hmm. we have to we do have, the history. Okay. so i was i was just the keynote speaker at the american uh, craft spirits association room full of white men because that's who really runs the spirit really? industry that's yeah. who's really in it and you had you know a thousand people deep and i'm at the front and i'm explaining this to them and i said you know charcoal every bit of, of whiskey we can can say where it came from the process we know this came from france and this came mm-hmm. from ireland and this came from scotland we can identify it charcoal mellowing is the only thing that appears to have dropped out of the sky hmm. so i told that group anytime you see something drop out of the sky in america around the 17 1800s Hello. just give slaves credit on <laughs> gp it's Hello. a cover up because yeah, you know, it's a cover you know? up because. <laughs> okay okay just because, just because. And it, it, but but the thing is is that we have to remember we weren't citizens we were property mm-hmm. you uh-huh. cannot give credit to, to property, property. Wow. You take the credit for your property's work. Right. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Okay, so there's this little yes, chore boy who run, a, who's running around picking up pig yeah. poop and everything. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, collecting milk, milking yeah. cows, doing all these different yeah. things. There's Nathan Nearest Green who was uh, um, asked to teach him this process. Yes. But he was running the, the still. Yes. Right? How in that time was he able, like who was collecting the money? Like, well, oh, right. that would still be. So this is the beauty of, of saying I gave up the whiskey business without giving up the whiskey business. Okay. Dan, it was still Dan Calls. Yeah, oh, so Dan Calls, you still, weren't giving up that was, paper. No, okay. no, no, no. Yeah. So yeah. he gave up running it to appease the church and to appease his wife. He did not give, give up, up the, the paper. Oh, okay, so Dan <laughs> Calls still, <laughs> still had so, that. So if you're, okay. on, if you're on the property, which Kenny has been on, if you're on the Amazing. property where the home is versus where the still site is, you've got a good 25-minute walk, uh-huh. and it's really hilly so it's not like something they were trying to do every day okay. so nearest and and those who worked the steel were on one part of the property uh-huh. and then the family was on the other side of the property okay. and so all all they had to do was he made it and it got sold but this is the interesting thing about that kid is that as time went on he wasn't really in the still house making whiskey what he discovered is he knew how to sell really really well this kid. This kid. This kid. Okay. So Sorry, you've boy. got the Civil War going, and you've got this little kid that knows, all right, there's a shoot on site if you see anybody selling whiskey to the soldiers. That was the law. I mean, you shoot to kill if someone tries to, to sell or, or bring whiskey to our soldiers because they didn't want the soldiers being drunk. drunk yeah. However, this boy never grew to more than five foot two even when he was grown. And so he's a little kid, and so he realizes, oh, wait a minute, they won't kill a kid. They're not going to expect I'm bringing whiskey. Wow. And so he begins selling it to the soldiers. He's selling it to general stores. He becomes this brilliant salesperson, brilliant entrepreneur. And then during the Civil War, when he's 15, he loses his father. Mm-hmm. So then he's an orphan in the middle of all of this. So he really has to start hustling to be able to take care of himself. And he just figures out, I know how to sell. And then he realized, I know how to market. So he was able to market the same whiskey that Nearest had been making for Dan Call. He can market that same whiskey for himself because he was the one out in the public. And wow. people got to know who he was. Who? What was his name? <laughs> well, it, <laughs> Give me a drum roll. Give me a drum roll. His, Give me a drum roll. His, his, <laughs> So this white kid's name, his legal name is Jasper Newton Daniel. You guys know him as Jack Daniel. Folks in Lynchburg know him as Uncle Jack. Jack Daniels. Yeah. You know how many times I've seen that bottle? (laughs) In your home. Yeah, and I thought he made the... 
you know, you would not know this part of the history. You would not know this. But let me tell you why we know this part of the history. And this is important. So Jack Daniel's biography that was written in 65 and 66, published in 67, that interviewed everyone who knew Jack, everyone who was around him, everyone who worked for him, his family, his closest friends. That's who was interviewed. And in that book, Nearest and his family are mentioned 50 times. Really? In another person's biography. So it was clear that they wanted to make sure Nearest's legacy was never forgotten. Now, it was, but that was not Jack's family's fault. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for yeah. giving yeah. give, 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 yeah. yeah. Fawn Weaver. Yeah. First of all, before we continue, I want to give out your social media because you're doing a lot of great projects. But yes, I want to yes, talk yes, about yes. this one. How can people reach you directly if they want to find out more You can. on I your mean, social media? I am ter- I'm going to tell you now, I, I, I don't do – well, it's not I'm terrified okay. of it. I don't really do social media. But where I tell you I, I do respond is on the Facebook, on the – Uncle Nearest page. If someone tags my name, I do respond. Uncle Nearest. So you spell it N E A R E S T. E S T. Yes. Okay. And then Kenny Burns. How can they reach you? At Kenny Burns. That's yeah. easy. Now, Everything. Kenny, what is Kenny's? Well, before we get to Kenny, yeah. What do you want to do? What are you going to do with this story now that we're finding out about? I am telling it all over the world. Okay. I made a commitment to Nearest's family mm-hmm. that before I die, that people around the world will know their ancestors' name that they will know his legacy of excellence. That's my commitment to them. Uh-huh. So even when we were just at, a, at another show and, and I sent them a text and pictures and said, hey, now I'm going to sway. Uh-huh. And you just see just a long chain of his family, Excited, just high yeah. fives, you go girl, don't give up, keep going. Because they know I go from city to city to city because I've made this commitment to them. People will know his name around the world. Mm-hmm. And then on a bigger scale, why is this important? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's important for us because if you think about it, we do not have any stories in African-American history where we worked side by side with a white during that period of time and was respected, was honored, was loved. We need that. T- we need that now mm-hmm. and we need More to kind that. of look at that and as a framework for what we need to fix now so mm-hmm. when you look at different things and you love history i love history when we talk about selma right yeah everyone likes to talk about us crossing that bridge or they'll talk about bloody sunday people don't realize that martin luther king tried to cross that bridge three times right. the first time you look at the pictures it was all us mm-hmm. bloody sunday Second time he tries to cross the bridge, there was all us and a little bit, a sprinkle of here or there of white folks. Mm -hmm. And he knelt right before they crossed over and took the group back because he knew this was going to be a slaughter. Third time they made it over. And if you look at the pictures, they're all embraced side by side, white, black, white, black. That's why they made it across that bridge. Mm -hmm. And so we have to understand that the way that we're going to really truly progress in America, the way that we balance the scales is not fighting with white people. It's going arm in arm with those who get it Mm -hmm. and those who understand and say, we're gonna do this together. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something we need to remember now. So when I look at the story of Nearest and the story of Jack and the way that their families were so intertwined coming up Mm -hmm. and the way that there was not this difference between the two because color was not, it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. Nearest and and Jack were both in bad situations. Yeah, yeah. They both had to to, to work their way out of of that. Yeah. a class thing with them. Yeah. 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 Uh, we got Reno on the line from Georgia. Reno, good morning. How you Reno. doing? Reno. What up, what up, what up, what up, Sway? What up, Reno? <laughs> <laughs> what up, Reno? Pick Reno, yo. Reno. Give it up for Reno. <laughs> hey, what do you think of this yo, story? Reno, I what? I can't believe I got on, yo. Shit, I've been listening to y'all for freaking years. What up, Heather What up, Trace? What's up, family? Hi. Oh, okay. Hello. All right. Reno, what do you think of that story you just heard? Oh, man, I love the story, man, and I, and I really appreciate you guys putting it out there and giving the opportunity for this, this, this lineage and this man's legacy so we can understand the truth of what goes on with the eyes. You know, I drink Jack Daniels all the time, and I never really knew. I appreciate y'all for that. Wow. All love. Wow, that's what's appreciate up. appreciate that comment. Kenny Burns, let me ask you this, because I've seen Kenny Burns take a – take a, a seed and, and, and make a forest out of it. You know, that's, what, the, that's that. what this man does, a visionary. What is your role in this? And then talk about this special edition brand right here. Yeah, so, I mean, well, first of all, um, I've been involved with Spirits for a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, pretty much created the 
you know, the lifestyle and the ambassador things that you see all spirit companies do, mm-hmm. improved an ROI on how we can be important and we can contribute. And, you know, when I left uh, Combs about a year and a half ago, mm-hmm. you know, I was getting bombarded with opportunities. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine was uh, doing a raise for fun and told me about it. And then he started to tell me this rich history. Mm-hmm. And the rich history had everything to do with reparations. It had everything to do with personal things I was feeling of not being rewarded properly by the bigger companies and not, and it was just like, I couldn't wait to meet her. And yeah. then the first time we actually meet is in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And I got to, you know, walk the hollow ground and really hear the stories to see the few cinder brick blocks that w- was once nearest his home. and find out that this was the creek that originally made Jack Daniels and just all these things. And then also to see how gangster she is. Like, y'all, so you're getting this historian <laughs> vibe. Like, and how smart, yeah. like, but how that. strategic and smart she is. I mean, because not only did she have the opportunity to buy, you know, those 300 acres, she's also made other purchases around to solidify, right, the fact that she's in business. A lot of times we yeah. get an opportunity and it's so good, like we could sell right now, like but she's not into that. Yeah. The importance of putting the descendants through college through the nearest Green Foundation. Um seven, which are in school in, in school seven now. Seven or right now. Uh-huh. And it will continue throughout the history of this this brand. And uh-huh. one's going actually graduating soon. Goes get- to grad school. So we we, we pay wow. full ride through their undergraduate and through and grad masters. Wow. And your wow. right, yeah. right. I mean yeah. that's so for me, in my 40s, a father of a 17-year-old, a father of a 13-year-old, married almost 19 years, like it's important for legacy, Amen. Uh-huh. right? I I didn't I wasn't taught that. I don't even know what that looks like. My my mom's side is the only side I really know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so for me, it's just about legacy, and this has a rich legacy story, and I want it to mean something. So wow. that's why I joined forces with this genius <laughs> slash gangster. <laughs> You okay. Gotta have it, a little gangster. Gotta yeah. have a, a little, little gangster. Gotta, and then, what is this? What is this about the Uncle Nearest? Yeah. Uh, so, so Uncle Nearest 1856 Premium Whiskey. There's two. You you have the age in front of you. There's also a Premium Silver, mm-hmm. and it is the first in the market ever. And so yeah, it starts off. Yeah. It starts wow. off a little proof. light. This is hundred proof. Yeah, yeah. It starts off a, a little lighter than this the, okay. uh, than the age. Uh-huh. We pull all the color out of it using natural carbon from coconut shells. Girl. But we leave in all of the smoke <laughs> from the charred barrels, from the, the charcoal mellowing, because if we want to highlight what it is that nearest taught, we have to make sure the focus is on that charcoal mellowing, uh-huh. right? And so it is the only triple charcoal mellowed whiskey in the world. And we use an old 19th century Lynchburg recipe that was saved in a fire. And ironically, it sits in a safety deposit box at the bank that Jack Daniel founded in 1888. And the bank. The bank. And the reason why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. reason why we have it there is because Nearest's family, one thing we didn't talk about is is when Nearest was alive, he became the wealthiest African American immediately following the Civil War in that area. Mm-hmm. And obviously that would be because he worked for Jack. Yeah. But then all of his children and grandchildren, they own just a lot of land and, and they, they, they knew who they were. When you see pictures of them, they are elite society. Like mm-hmm. there is no question about it. But his grandson, Townsend, lived in Indianapolis after, you know, in his adult years. And he became one of the first African-Americans to have a liquor license. And he owned the main pub in town right next to Madam C.J. Walker's theater. Wow. Right? Madam C.J. Walker. Right. Wow. And so he, though, because his, his, uh, his, his aunt, she says, now you know, I'm sorry, his, his niece, says, you know, Uncle Townsend never had a, a car. He never learned how to drive. So, well, why not? He had a chauffeur his whole life. Come on. And his chauffeur would black take excellence. him. Black excellence. His <laughs> not chauffeur. Not just a hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Father. Uh, I love it. Five. I love it. Not just his a chauffeur hashtag. would take him on a regular basis from Indianapolis to Lynchburg because he felt safer keeping his money with Jack's family at that bank where the well, recipe now sits in the safety deposit box than he did in keeping his money in Indiana. And, and we never hear those stories. Yeah. We never we never yeah. hear how things happen in a positive light. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We never heard, you know, hear about just the effort that was given in the relationship side of it. And this is generations. The elders that she's spoken to yeah. and the things she's done in Lynchburg, like I'm talking about elders 75 and up. Correct? Yeah, absolutely. And then even like, you know, she went to the black cemetery because they, you know, they had black, black and white cemetery. Uh-huh. Cleaned it up, put a memorial for Uncle Nearest 
because back in the day, they didn't have names on headstones. You don't know who lined where, yeah. but she beautified it, you know, came to the, and got with the, you know, with the family and the culture. And that's why Sway. That's why Sway. That's why That's why That's why Sway. No, no, that's But okay. even, even though what he's talking about, the, <laughs> fact, the, no, the that just happened right there. No, it did. The cemetery, when we, it was a big project. The whole community came out. But the crazy part is all of the matriarchs and patriarchs that are in Jack Daniels' books, so those mm-hmm. families that still are in Lynchburg, Every matriarch and patriarch was at Nearest's unveiling of his memorial to white, cut the black, ribbon wow. side by side, white and black. So oh. it's this, it was the same thing. And in and, and right before we cut the ribbon, I asked for everybody to, to do that, thinking the same thing, Selma. Mm-hmm. And, and everyone that, that we had like a praise team from my church that was there. And they came up and they said, love will build a bridge. And everybody in that room was singing, or everyone in that, it was singing that yeah. right before we cut the ribbon with Nearest's family next to Jack's family. Wow. You, Farm you know? Weaver, ladies and gentlemen. That's why, Kenny Burns. Yeah. That's, That's why. why. That's why. Kenny here okay. Um, <laughs> real quick, Rich in Oregon. Good morning, Rich. You a bartender? Hey, Rich. I am a bartender. Good, good morning, Sway. Good morning, Heather. Good morning, good morning, Tracy. I love your show. Thank you. I uh, want to give a shout out. My boy, DJ Ism, he was up there killing it. Um, <laughs> I've been bartending for 20 years, and this story is beyond fascinating. I'm Mexican, and so um, when I was in school, I did a little report on mezcal. Mm. And what's funny is that mezcal was created when the Spanish ran out of rum in Mexico, and they created mezcal, and they still make it the same way. And now mezcal is such a commodity Mm -hmm. that – People in Tennessee and stuff are buying it and storing it in these barrels that once had this whiskey, which I find fascinating. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. See that tie right there? Yes. And you're, More history. So, so you're in you're in Portland. So are you are you serving Uncle Nearest there? Uh, I'm gonna get it in my bar. I'm gonna talk to my owner today and be like, we need to get this in here because the owner of my bar, he's from the Bay Area. Oh. He's half black, half white. So oh. I was like, we we got to do it, man. You know? Beautiful. And, tell tell him Sway. To show that, tell him Sway told. Oh, uh, Rich, tell tell him Sway puts his stamp of approval on it. Yeah. Oh, I will. The, we, the we, official we, mayor we forever. We 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 fuck, we fuck <laughs> you, so. the, the mayor of Oakland. <laughs> yeah. I, and Sway, I saw you uh, at the first. Um, what was that? Like ten years ago, the the big music festival out there in, uh, in Concord, Rock the Bells. Rock the Bells, wow. yeah, we used to, uh, yeah, we help. we, well, I'll give you some history on Rock the Bells, but we help uh, kick off Rock the Bells. Hey, man, Rich, get that Uncle Nearest in your bar, man. Thank Beautiful you. I appreciate Rich. you, Thank man. Thank you, Rich. Um, before you go, I'm going to just name some names. Um, Eddie Kendricks, Marvin Gaye, huh? the Four Tops. Mm. Yeah. Temptations. You Robbie, uh, Robbie, you uh, felt that? Music. Barry Gordy. <laughs> hey. Um Fine's father uh, worked in Hitsville well, alongside Barry Gordy. Yeah. Wow. And was uh, one of the pins, mm-hmm. one very instrumental in producing Lenny Williams. Yeah. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's that called? The love song? I love you. Yeah. Your father. He was. You know what? And I, and I was... I, he, this he, is, he wrote for all these artists. He wrote he wrote for all of them. He produced for all of them. When we grew up, he he was when he decided to leave Motown, he was the number two producer in the nation. Wow. And so we grew up with all these different plaques and gold records and platinum records all over every wall. And I never mention it. I always kind of forget. It was just who I was. And my husband, when I first took him to my parents' Keith, house. Keith, what up, Keith? Hello, my honey. When I, when I first took him to my parents' house, he walks through the door and he sees all these platinum and gold records. And he looks at me and he's like, did you forget to tell me something? <laughs> and I really had. I just never dawned. It's just yeah, who, every day. It was yeah. my every day. Yeah. I grew up with Uncle Smokey and Uncle Stevie. That that was what, that's, that's what crazy. I, Uncle Smokey. That Smoke. was, okay. that, was that was, oh, and I just, I love uh, them. I love them. But that's that's how I grew up. Uh, and But here's the crazy part. And what I love about doing the research for, for this, for Uncle Nearest, is I had no idea until the New York Times pointed it out that the reason why my father even ended up at Motown uh-huh. is because he was going to Southern University on a scholarship and participated in a sit-in. 
mm-hmm. and lost his scholarship. It's in her wow. blood, y'all. And and so they they the civil rights organization told all the students, anyone who loses your scholarship or gets kicked out of school for participating in a civil rights demonstration, mm-hmm. we will pay a one way ticket anywhere in the country. And so my father chose Los Angeles so he could do music. And Barry Gordy heard about him in Los Angeles and reached out to him and said, can I bring you into Detroit? Now, here's the crazy thing about my dad, and I have to get it from him. Because everyone always talks about how Barry had all the rights, all the publishing rights. Yeah, yeah. Nobody had their. I believe that there were three people who, and I, don't quote me on this because okay. I'm not certain, but it's a very small number of people who had their publishing rights from day one. My father was one. Oh, you came for money. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, she, she's made she's made her own too. She's made her own. Oh wow! Her own. Hey, but, uh, touch me, touch me, Fawn Weaver. Let it rub off on me. Too. I made my own, but I do think that 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 entrepreneurial spirit yeah, yeah. Yeah, that could, says I I will own my own stuff. Yeah. And you that thought, that I got from from day one. That is, day dear one. Lord, baby Jesus, may everybody continue to go forth in ownership. <laughs> yes, that's uh, and prosperity. Thank you, Jesus. Kenny <laughs> Burns, good to see you. Always you proud of you, oh, man. Always you inspired too, by yes, you, sir. Kenny Burns, man. Thank Fun you. Weaver, thank absolute you, pleasure to meet you, yeah, and we you. shall cross paths again. Yes. And by the way, you guys need a, a menu for uh, Uncle Nearest. This brand Heather B is a certified mixologist. Yes. She yes. come up with a lot of recipes. Heather already going B. on in the back of my yes. mind. Yes. Trust me. Yes. Okay, it's already, I got, got you. that. You got that? Honor. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All I'm right. Just, just motivated and inspired. Like my spirit is just jumping. Just hearing all of this. Thank you for the okay. information. Thank you. For the history. Lesson. Uncle Nearest. Thank you. Start you requesting it in your bars. No, got, yeah. All right. Wherever Thank you go you. to drink. Request some Uncle ask Nearest. Absolutely. Okay. Ask, for ask for it. Oh, no. Okay. The hood about to be lit. I okay. got y'all. Okay. I'm on the other. I, I got the gangster side okay. of me. Jersey. All right. All right. <laughs> Stand I got up. Covered we're, in, Jersey. we're in Jersey. Can I tell you that Jersey sold out? They did their first. Yeah. They put in an order. Yeah. They yeah. sold Drinking out Jersey. in less than an hour. The distributor wow. put in a second order. It sold out in two hours. The distributor put in a third order. It sold out in less than five days. When By the time I got there to do the distributor training, they were on their fourth order, and it was headed out the door. So, Jersey, thank you. Jersey, stand thank up. Thank you. Jersey. Just don't drive. Stand up, but don't drive, yeah. Jersey. All right. Fawn <laughs> Weaver, thank you for coming thank by. You I appreciate you. Thank, thank you for your words. Thank I appreciate you. that. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Kenny Burns, as always. Yes, sir. All right. And that, up next, we got Ali, Shahid, Muhammad, and Legend. Consequence from Tribe Call Quest. Wow. They have a new project. If you're a Tribe Call Quest fan, you could talk to them directly, 888-742-3345. <laughs> 